Hello, it is I, Briny Blue, here to play the Diffraction Mini Demo with you. I adore visual novels, and this one in particular is about photography. And probably much more than that, but we'll see. My name is April. Press enter to complete. We're going to keep the name. Okay. I'll leave Fane in your capable hands, all right? All right. I got to go or else I'll lose the duck. What? You can't. And he's already gone. Figures. We came all the way up a mountain and he abandons us to go on a literal wild goose chase. Hey, Fane, you okay with this? I think it was a wild duck chase. A wild duck... That's not the point here. What is the point, then? Never mind. You don't have a camera, right? Are you just using your phone or something? I'm okay without anything. I'll just watch you. Flash. Huh? Why are you taking a picture of me? Because you have to participate somehow. Here. How are you going to learn to be a famous photographer at this rate? I don't take pictures, though. Maybe you don't, but I do. I'll be a super famous photographer one day. That sounds cool. I'm sure you'll be great. Are you trying to make fun of me? No, I think you could do it. Oh. What if... What if I said I wanted to be a well-known influencer, too? You'll do amazing for sure. What if I wanted to be a T-Rex? I heard they sell those blow-up dinosaur costumes in the next town over. Ah, oh, jeez. He believes in us. Miss April? Miss April? Blink, blink. Huh? Are you alright? Ah, uh, stupid. Why am I daydreaming at a time like this? I... Let's see. Do we apologize? Pretend you were listening? Ask who she is. Let's apologize. Sorry. Could you please repeat yourself? As I was saying, we currently can't afford to invest in anyone without at least three years of relevant work experience. The woman vaguely flips through my, through my portfolio. It's clear based on how quickly she turns each page that she's barely taking anything in. Now, that isn't to say your work isn't good. You might even be a good fit for our company once you get some experience. But unfortunately, three years of personal social media work isn't quite our standard for experience. I understand. Of course. It's not like I haven't heard that one before. You know, I'd be quite happy to give you a chance to spot your bland, boring portfolio. But you need to want it. To have passion for it. Our biggest clients all want tasteful, cultured body shots of themselves. And we are a discreet studio dedicated to art. You're just not convincing me right now with this social media nonsense. We can't just take on someone who's done nothing but play around online over the last few years. If you're that good, you should start figuring out how to get some solid marketable skills or add some culture to your portfolio. No thanks. Wow, your portfolio is excellent! Wait, what? Mm-hmm, yes, yes. I think we could definitely offer you a place on our internship program. Really? We can't pay you, of course, but you'll get a whole lot of exposure and work experience. Should have known. So how about it? I'm sure we can make it worth your while. <sighs> I'll give it some thought. Thanks. No, 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 no. Nothing but rejections. I was told applying at job fairs was supposed to be easier, but that's not true at all. At least email rejections aren't as brutal. It's like the work world these days. You have to have like 20 years of experience and you're only 20. <laughs> it's like, you gotta work your whole life. <laughs> this was just a waste of time. I should just steer clear of Mr. Cultured Photos booth as much as possible. <sighs> another day, another disappointment, I guess. That sounds cool. I'm sure you'll be great. Great, my butt. I wonder what that boy would think if he saw me today. Would he still think I'm doing great? What a silly thought. 
thinking about some kid after all this time. But it's a bit sad. I remember what he said perfectly, but I can't quite remember his name. I swear it started with an F, right? Was it Fafang? No, no, I think it could have been Frank. <laughs> I like this, how they're adding more and more people. Maybe it was more of a Finn? <gasps> there he is! Wait. Isn't that... Fane? H hey The quiet exclamation is lost in the noisy crowd, as is the sudden flicker of an all-too-familiar face in the distance. Without realizing, I take a few steps forward. Yeah, looking at the two guys in this visual novel, Fane is my type, so... <laughs> we'll see how it goes from here. It, it can't be. Fane? Why is he here? Where's he been? Did he look different? He... A million questions surface, but before there's time to think about any of them, I'm already running after him. I love the art. Even the backgrounds, they're so nice. The crowd around me blurs while my focus stays on the spot he last stood. Only in the rush, I'd forgotten to look where I was going. Uh, hey, hey, watch it! The man I collided with others a panicked curse as his things clattered to the ground around him. Not the coffee! <laughs> a few startled people nearby also quickly back away, eyeing us with a mixture of surprise and concern. There's no time to worry about this. I have to get up. I sweep up my drop portfolio and ready myself to run once more when... Crack. Eh. Oh, crap. Oh, I thought we like stepped on his glasses or something. Not his phone. There beneath my shoe lies a very shiny, very new looking, very broken beyond repair smartphone. Oh, we done screwed up. What should I do? Keep running, apologize, and run after Fane. Stand around awkwardly, stop and apologize, attempt to make amends. Apologize and keep running! We're on a mission here. I can't deal with this now. I need to find Fane. Looking up from the cracked phone, I catch the stranger's gaze and hesitate for a moment. It's no good. I don't have time for this. I I'm sorry. I have to go. I'll come back later. Without looking for a response, I quickly turn to run after Fane once again. Barely evading a few more startled passerbys, I made my way towards the place where I'd last spotted him, occasionally catching a glimpse of blue hair. I ended up finding myself just outside of the venue exit. <sighs> How is he so slippery? I don't even remember him being athletic at all. People grow up. Despite the fact that I had been running, he seemed to have already vanished in the direction of the park. Finally. Wait. Where did he go? The park appears to be empty. Or so it seems. Until I spot movement beneath a wooden picnic table, as what seems to be a head peeks out over the bench. <laughs> Our eyes meet just for a moment. Fane? The boy startles. A short thump can be heard as his head met the underside of the table, wobbling it slightly. He was running from us. Ouch, 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 ouch. Clasping his head, he seems to flinch for a moment before attempting to clumsily scramble out from under the table. What was he even doing down there? Is he trying to hide? Are you okay? Maybe I should... Um, let's give him some space. Despite the situation, I stay back and allow him time to get himself together. Maybe I imagined it, but I thought I heard a sigh of relief from him. Maybe he actually was trying to hide. I wonder why. It only takes him a minute longer to get up. But still, he says nothing. You are Fane, right? That's me. So? His hands and knees are covered in dirt. He now stands upright an uncharacteristically wary look on his face. Well, that's direct. I... I really should have thought of something to say before talking to him. 
Maybe he doesn't know who I am after all these years. Uh, do you remember me? Vane seems to tense up further at my question, and for a moment it looks like he'll answer me. He looks troubled. <clears throat> but instead he continues to avoid my gaze as he fiddles nervously with the camera hanging from his neck. Well, this isn't awkward at all. It's me, April. You know, that person you met at photography camp that one summer. We spent the week paired up. Not even a flicker of emotion or recognition appears with my words. What do you want? Actually, what do I even want? I scrambled through a crowd for him, so... What now? We'll laugh it off and make something up or be honest. Well, let's be honest. Honestly, I'm not really sure. I just saw you and then... Well, I just kind of ran after you without thinking, I guess. He seems to study me carefully as I speak. I've been out of town for a while, and I don't really know anyone here anymore, so I guess I thought it might be nice to talk to you again. But it's okay if you don't want to. Though his posture remains tense, something seems to give in his expression. As he looks away once more, his mouth remaining closed in a thin line for a moment. It's not that I don't want to. I just... He looked down at his camera nervously for a moment. Maybe he's feeling shy? If you don't want to talk right now, how about giving me your social media? Or, I guess I could give you mine. He looks back at me carefully. You don't need to message me or anything. I probably won't really have the time to talk much anyway. It'd just be nice to not lose contact again, you know? Well... I guess this probably seems kind of weird to you since you don't remember and all. What am I even saying at this point? I barely have time for myself, let alone for reviving forgotten friendships. He looks at me thoughtfully, before beginning to search his pockets and clumsily digging out a rather beat up looking smartphone. <gasps> we got the number! We got the number! He takes a minute to search for something. Finally he points the screen at me, a profile page open. Here, I don't know how to do this. Uh, just a sec. Digging out my own phone, I note his profile name. Fane63501. Right, got it. Thanks! He hesitantly pockets the phone again, continuing to awkwardly stare at me for a bit before finally muttering. I'm late for work. Fane raises a single stiff hand in what can only be assumed to be a greeting gesture of sorts. Okay, bye. And without another word, he scrambles off towards the park entrance. What was that? <sighs> well, whatever it was, it certainly wasn't the Fane I remember. He seems to have anxiety now. <laughs> or something. I guess I have his account now, though. Might as well take a peek. Let's see what we have here. Fane 63501. Maybe his profile will tell me why he's being so weird. Five followers and one post. How does he only have one post? It's even from three years ago. And it has 75,000 likes. It has 75,000 likes? Wait, what is this? How? The numbers are still there no matter how much I look at the post. This makes no sense. He might have just reposted something, right? This makes even less sense than before. Stomach gurgles. Well, it's late. I can think about this later. I should probably get home before it starts raining anyways. Mom's not going to be happy if I'm late either. I should... Dude, we, we got to uh, pay up for this phone destruction we've done. I'd only taken a few steps in the direction of home when all of a sudden a thought flashed back into my mind. Wait. Ah, crap, I totally forgot about him. I completely ditched him back there. What was I even thinking? And I was just about to go home, too. <laughs> if I go back for him now, he'll probably be super pissed, if he's even still there. But then again, if I just leave, that's also not right. Never mind how awkward it would be if I ran into him again after this. <sighs> what do I do? Okay, okay. Calm down and think. It's not that late, so the job fair is still open for a bit, I think. He might still be there if he's attending one of the events, maybe? 
I should probably at least try to do the right thing, shouldn't I? Just as I'm contemplating this, I feel a cold drop of rain hit my cheek. Soon a flurry of heavy raindrops follow. Looking up, I find that the sky above has taken on a foreboding shade of gray. Ugh, fine! I so don't have the time for this. But I also don't think I can just go home after remembering this. And so without wasting another moment, I begin running through the rain back towards the building where the job fair is being held. Dude, if I crush somebody's phone, I'd probably just die right there. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I pause to catch my breath. I should really stop neglecting my workout routine. <sighs> and my clothes feel all damp from the rain. Okay, focus, focus. Having caught my breath, I pull myself up, scanning the space ahead for the man with a broken phone. The venue is fairly empty at this point, so I can easily see across the expanse of the hall. However, hmm, I can't see him here. Could he have left already? Well, he was kind of flashy looking. I guess I could. Catching sight of a nearby unoccupied booth, I wander over. Excuse me. I catch a woman's attention. How can I help you? Well, uh, I was looking for someone and I was wondering if maybe you saw him. He was tall, now that I think about it, and kind of handsome. Describe hair, eyes, and clothes. Describe situation which you encountered him since it drew attention. Let's describe the situation. How do I even begin to explain this mess to someone? Well, earlier today, I accidentally crashed into someone here and knocked him down. I think I might have ended up breaking his phone, too. Have you perhaps seen that guy by any chance? <laughs> the woman gives me a withering look, clearly unimpressed about what I just told her. She then opens her mouth as if to say something, but before she can do that, we're both interrupted by a voice behind me. It seems like the lady does know of her crime. Eh? Eh? I turn towards the voice only to find the exact person I was looking for. See, he already conveys attitude because for some reason when I read his line, I put my hand on my hip. <laughs> and here I thought my dashing handsome self has been discarded like a used tissue once she disappeared. Does he need to describe himself as dashing and handsome? I'm so proud of you for coming back to take responsibility. For smashing someone's custom engraved 5,000 phone beyond repair and then running away. His tone might be mistaken for a playful joking under different circumstances. However, the pointed stare he directs at me tells me an entirely different story. He smiles at me. It is absolutely not reassuring. For a moment, an awkward silence falls. Um... I awkwardly make eye contact with the woman who asked, who'd I'd asked for help. She continues to smile at me, but it's clearly uncomfortable. Ugh, this is so awkward. We should probably continue this in private. Well, well, it looks like I found him, thanks. Without another word, I quickly turn to leave, soon hearing his footsteps follow behind me. A glance back has him smiling and shrugging at me, as though what just happened wasn't entirely his doing. He's kind of starting to irritate me. <sighs> what should I do? A safe distance away from prying ears, I come to a stop, as he does. It doesn't look like he's going to help me out and make the first move here, so maybe I should. You realize I was there looking for you, right? I turn to face him. He looks back at me innocently. So? So, I really don't think you had to go and make a scene like that. It was totally uncalled for. Huh? He raises an eyebrow at me skeptically, clearly unimpressed with that response. Okay, I probably did deserve this a bit, since I did run and abandon him like that, but still! <sighs> this is clearly getting me nowhere. Okay, fine. I came back to apologize about your phone, so I'm sorry about that and running off afterwards. I'd like to make it up to you somehow. Hmm? And how are you going to do that? How am I going to do that? I hadn't actually thought that far ahead. Maybe I can tell him I'll pay him for it when I get more money? I'll pay... Wait, wait. Didn't he also say something earlier about it being worth 5000 That can't possibly be true, though, can it? I look up to find him smiling at me. Uh, I did mention that it was worth 5000 didn't I? 
brand new, customized, engraved. I almost forgot to mention all the work I probably lost by not being able to access my email. I'd love to know what you have in mind. I, um... We're in debt. You don't know how to make it up to him, but you want to try. Tell him you'll pay him when you have money. You don't know you will. Uh, tell him to get lost. It wasn't your fault. Um, let's just tell him the first one and see if he has any suggestions. I I don't actually know what I can do, but I want to try. Hmm. He makes a show of tapping his chin, humming all the while. Luckily for you, I am not only handsome, but also quite merciful. I'm sure we'll think of something. Well, looks like I've got to get going now. I'll be in touch. Wait, but how will you contact me? I have my methods. He has his methods? What does that what, what does that mean? That's kind of scary. Before I can ask, he's already turned to leave, giving me a small wave. Okay then, I guess. Thoroughly confused to stand around for a good few moments watching him wander off until... Ah oh, crap, what am I doing just standing here? I quickly wrestle my phone from my pocket to check the time. I knew it. It's already 6.30pm. I'm totally going to be late now. I quickly begin making my way towards the nearest exit. I hope Dad won't be too upset. I should probably move faster. And so I did, beginning my journey home. The walk back home is a relatively short and uneventful one. With the peaceful rain. Soon enough, I am standing at the entrance of my parents' house, quietly contemplating how to delicately explain my complete lack of success at the job fair to them. I guess no matter what, they'll find out sooner or later. Might as well just bite the bullet and get it over with. Turning the key, I push down the door handle. Here goes. Walking in, I quietly close the door behind me, taking off my shoes before proceeding to walk down the now rather dim hall. This is kind of horror movie-esque. <laughs> it's dark. The TV's on. It's, mm. I hear the muffled sound of the TV coming from the living room. I guess they must have already eaten. Quietly opening the door, I peek into the room to see my father sitting on the sofa watching what appears to be the news. I'm back. He looks over at me curiously. You're back late? Yeah, sorry about that. I got held up a bit. Better not tell him about Fane. Seems like it. You're soaked through. So, how'd it go? Find anything? Not really. I wasn't what they were looking for, I guess. I see. He pauses as he looks at me, seeming to consider his next words carefully, before finally relenting with a short sigh. That's okay. We can talk about this tomorrow morning when your mother is back from her shift. Get some rest for now. You look tired. And make sure to take a warm shower or dry off completely before you catch a cold. All right, I will. I pulled the door shut slowly. Good night. Night, sweetie. Well, that went better than I thought for now. Aw, her cute room. I make my way to my room, dumping my jacket and bag next to the door before collapsing on my bed. Just like me, she has like a water bottle by her bed <laughs> at all times. Cute. <sighs> I wonder what mom and dad will say tomorrow. I told them I'd try my best to get a job, but look at me. All I got out today was a load of mean comments and some guy asking me to work for exposure. <sighs> Maybe that one booth guy was right. Maybe my portfolio was just bland or something. <sighs> so depressing. Come on, think happy thoughts. I'll, I'll just have to work on making my portfolio even better. So they'll have no choice but to hire me next time. We gotta network, we gotta make connections. Let's do it. <sighs> Who am I even kidding? That's what I tried to tell myself before the job fair, yet today was even more of a disaster than usual. What a day. I still can't believe that was Fane. He acted so different compared to what I remember. Not to mention the hair. And the camera. I thought he barely used phone cameras before, but the one he had was actually a good one. Speaking of which, Mr. Dashing and Handsome, more like Mr. Self-Flattery. 
Sure, I broke his phone and left, but he could have just discussed it normally with me. I don't think he's normal. I don't even want to know what his methods are. Let's just hope I never see him again. <sighs> Maybe I could ask Mom and Dad if they know anything. I don't think they will, but it doesn't hurt to ask. I'll try to finish some uploads tomorrow, too. Maybe send out some more job applications. Schnooze. Schnoo schnooze. And that was the end of the mini demo. It was so good. I'm excited to read more when it comes out. I feel like I kind of relate to April. When you have a passion for something and you're just getting nowhere with it. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people, especially in their early 20s, really can relate. Yep. But it's kind of cool to read a visual novel that's kind of centered around photography. Yep. Yep, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> and I'm excited for more. So anyone that tuned in, please support the makers of Diffraction. Give them likes. Give them likes and support. Let's do it. Alright, thank you for watching. I'll see you in another video.